Hello, Jamie. Hi, Eric. How are y'all both doing? We're both doing great. Eric says hi. Boy, my Texas accent sure did come through on that one, didn't it? So today we are going to talk about Eric, you and your brethren, spirits. So how do you think about that? What do you think about that? You, you game? He said he's game for anything you can think of. Okay, good. What do you and others look like over there? Five words he uses and get down to the real stuff. Uh oh. <laughs> Energy. <laughs> well, come on, tell me the first five words. It's not. It's not uh, age appropriate. Is that it? It's not age appropriate. Okay. It's just completely fresh out of the gate. Hardcore. Um, teasing. Vulgar language. Uh oh. This should be fun then. All right. So you look like energy. <laughs> tell me more. themselves the way that they appeared when they were in a body on earth they can well, he's telling me that they can change shapes as they see fit but I, I asked him what's the original state like what is if you're not thinking of anything Eric what's a comfort zone and what do you look like he said pure light Ooh, interesting like a ball of like a ball of light or a beam or what? Um, not necessarily like a circle ball of light. More uh, a little loose than that oval oblong. Okay. But the, it's a light source of its own and it shines out. Is it kind of like an orb that we catch in photographs sometimes? Yes. Okay. And now you come to me as Eric, the shape and the look of Eric, and I'm, I guess you do that with the same with Jamie. Do, the, do you do that with everybody? Do you keep your personality as Eric up there or over there? Well, he said when I'm communicating to people on Earth, especially people associated to the blog or who know about me as I was on Earth, I want to present myself exactly the way that I looked then, which, by the way, was handsome. Oh, uh, somebody said? <laughs> He's using some other words. Debonair, we can say that one. Debonair. Oh That's yeah. Debonair, yeah. Okay. Anything else about how you guys look? No, I said probably what's most important to know is that we don't need we don't need a shape because I think most people believe that. If there's something more holy to us or more grandeur that they want to dress us and shape us. Okay. Wait, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm sorry, he just went off on a little sideline. He's discussing how some people believe that they've had a past life experience or, or let's say a near-death experience let's take this one and he's describing that some of them will come back and say oh you know I was at a round table everybody was wearing um, uh, uh, long robes it, it looks like I'm looking at a bunch of Romans basically. okay like togas yeah, togas toga party and he, he just says who the fuck decides that because we're ancient and all-knowing that we have to fucking wear togas. He's like, that's ridiculous. Or that we're more holy, so we look like a, a monk. He goes, appearances mean nothing of who we are. So you can kind of tell people's dream state versus people's real near-death experiences or crossover experiences. Here's Basically, that's what he was talking about, the, the bullshit claims. Because if you're coming across stuff like that, they all walked as if they were tiptoeing like <laughs> like an encore at a ballet show. Pretty much that's going to be an overactive mind, and that's not going to be a, an authentic experience. It's going to be coming through some filter that you've created that you've decided it should look like.
based on your beliefs. Just like you said, your afterlife and your afterlife experience is based on your the beliefs that you create on, on Earth by your life, right? Ding, ding, ding. All right. Good. Now, how big? You say your light. Is it an infinite um, volume or how does... Oh, no. I know that where that's gone. Now, how big are you? No, uh, Eric. How big is your light, Eric? Light. Your energy, Eric. I'm not doing it. Come on. Um, stop. <laughs> Eric. <laughs> Not gonna let up today. I don't know what he ate for breakfast. Okay, yes, they don't really eat breakfast. But, but, um, but they can. If he, if he did, it was Wheaties. <laughs> um, in his uh, relaxed state, this oh <laughs> god. You're smaller than, than you let out to be. Thanks, Tafi. <laughs> All right. What are the spirit's abilities after transition, Eric? Oh, good. He can't really get nasty with that. Well, he can't, but spirit's abilities. What can he do? We said the first thing that you notice right away is time and travel. They don't exist with the same parameters that we believe them to have when we're alive. He said, period. So, <laughs> finally, he sits down in front of me. I put a chair in front of me so he'd be there, but he's been kind of standing. So fucking different, he says. And it's nice. It feels more natural. It doesn't feel like you're being scheduled or forced into a routine or needing to think ahead about how to set up a process to achieve a goal. It's like here, you don't have that even linear thought. You see it as a whole, as how it's going to affect everything. Like the way that we think right now, he says most people will get out their computers, look at their schedules, and decide that at 8 o'clock they're going to do this, 9 o'clock, 10, da -da, so that by Friday they have this finished. Okay, now imagine that you're thinking in this way. I know a lot of people use the little image of dropping a pebble in the lake or the pond. He's being real funny with his voice. And then it ripples out, and, you know, 360 rippling out. It touches the edges of the water, and then it comes back in ever so gently. But imagine that your thought is on every single ripple, every single wave, 360, again and again and again and again and again and again and again, and then back at you. Interesting. This must be his new phrase. So fucking cool. <laughs> You're still amazed by where you are and what you can do, huh? He said, yeah, there's a lot to learn. It, it doesn't, it was it. Your abilities, your language, your base knowledge, this, it, it doesn't, it doesn't stop on you. There, there's no end in sight. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's the most exciting thing. Well, that and a few other things. Just think nasty. Oh, God, of course. Boy, you are on a roll, Eric. This is the dirtiest session. Like, I know. I have chosen not to say the things. And normally I'll succumb and, like, turn red and do it. But I, I won't do it this time. 
next. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Gotta put a leash on that boy. All right, well. Create a leash I can put on him. Exactly. Now, what do you have to have to adjust to the most right after you transition? <laughs> His eyes light up and he kind of falls back into the chair. And when he goes, oh, immediately the overwhelming sense of peace. Mm. That you don't have anything to worry about. That you don't have any physical pain. No homework, no chores. <laughs> You think it's simple. Because <laughs> think huge. All of a sudden, you have no concern if someone is loving on you or hating you. There's no need to please someone. There's there's no... He's pausing. Cause and effect. There's no cause and effect, he says. And, and that's... Because that's linear. Yeah, he said, you're right, that's linear. And he goes, it's the first thing that you feel, and you think it's so surreal, you want to call it a dream state, and you know you're going to come out of it. You know, he goes, I bet half of you, upon dying, start pinching yourself, because you won't want to believe it's real. And then it keeps going, and it keeps going, and it remains consistent, and that's what blows you away. It's consistent. It's not contingent on anything that you do, Anything that you experience, anything that you desire, think, want, none of it. This whole compassion and peace remains consistent. Okay, that sounds good. Very good. Uh, all right, we will close now because uh, I've got some big questions that will take longer than... Uh, then the one minute we have re remaining in this session in this wonderful series. Eric? Excellent. All right. Uh, You'll you're... be here, hopefully less dirty. Okay, you're a little blurry, uh, Jamie. But, uh, okay, we'll fix it. Okay, stay tuned.